Um, the first question I would like to ask Milana um, is, can you just tell us a bit about your journey? So the journey that you've taken to where you are today, can you just tell us a little bit about the journey and how it took you um, in regards to making your steps good in regards to this look, the beautiful masjid that you have now? So Alhamdulillah, the journey is long. Um, uh, we'll try and summarize it in a very short few steps. I'm originally from India and my parents migrated to South Africa. So we grew up in South Africa. And from the after the age I was in grade two or grade four, grade four, and then uh, we ended up going to a Darulum. We always had this inspiration of becoming Hafiz of the Quran, memorizing the Quran, because my elder brothers done it. Yes. So we as youngsters, we thought we should do it as well. So Alhamdulillah, that got us into the Darul Ulum, Darul Ulum Zakaria in South Africa, in Indonesia. And there's, uh, in that Darul Ulum, there's about students from 52 different madrasas. I mean, different sure. countries. 52 different countries all got together in the same Darul Ulum Madrasa. Yeah. So mainly it's a memorization of the Quran and, you know, doing the whole Alimiya course, you know, uh, Tafsir, etc. I graduated in 2009, then 2010 uh, I went for one year Jamaat in the path of Allah. I went to India, Bangladesh, yeah. uh, Lesotho and South Africa, Cape Town. You might have heard yeah, of Cape, Cape Town. Town yeah. So we were in Cape Town, we finished off in Cape Town, Alhamdulillah. So, so how did you find that journey? So that one year journey was, was a, a very big eye opener yeah. in terms of you know, going around the world, seeing the conditions of different people. And generally when you go on a tour or on a holiday, you'll only see the upside of the country. Yeah. But when you go out, you know, in Jamaat and you meet the local communities, you actually see the both sides of the country. Oh, wow. Yeah, one to one. A lot of people, you know, you could actually inspire. And that's when we realized that the, the knowledge that Allah Ta'ala has given us, you know, we could actually give it out to so many people out there and they would just benefit. You know, Masha Allah. You must have found it hard. Was you traveling on your own? Was it like a group thing? Was so it, it was a group thing. Uh, we were actually uh, uh, told from the, while we were studying that once you finish your studies, you have to go. Yeah. You know, you should go out for one year uh, to different massages, different localities. So we were about seven months in India. Oh. We've been Hyderabad, uh, you know, Delhi. Uh, we've been to Gujarat, a few other areas, and then yeah. four months we were in Bangladesh. And so, then the remainder is in South Africa and uh, nearby countries. You've been obviously, like from what you've what you've told me now, you've been everywhere really. So life now, say if you was to go and do uh, become a Molana like steps there uh, for now, and compared to back then, what would be the difference? Like, could you see any difference? Would it be easier now, or would it be was it easier then, or did you have influence from your parents? Does everything like? Yeah. No, it, it, it all depends on, uh, so those that are graduating now, I would still say that they should make that courage to go out. Yeah. You know, go out there in the world and see for yourself how much uh, need there is in terms of uh, inspiration people need. Yeah. You know, people are suffering. Uh, they, it could be the wealthiest person, you know, you might be talking to, but inside, you know, yeah. he's, he's suffering. He doesn't have that, uh, that, that right spiritual... Uh, guidance, you know, yeah. that a person could give. And when you start talking to people, you actually realize that. So, and they're willing to hold on, you know, to the inspiration that you give them. Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll hold on to it and then take it further than you later on. So, I would say that these days, they, the youngsters should go out. Yeah. It's not difficult at all. It's just that you have to make that first choice yourself. Secondly, you asked that how did we get to this stage where we are currently. Mm -hmm. So, Personally, myself, I will tell you about that. Uh, then after doing that one year uh, in the path of Allah, I realized there's a lot we can do in terms of deen. Alhamdulillah, I was working for Radio Islam in yeah. South Africa uh, for about six months. So in uh, Radio Islam, I just had a very uh, simple uh, task in terms of uh, you know looking after the library, etc. But at the same time, uh, I had an opportunity of going on a tour with different uh, artists. And I think Hafiz Abu Bakr was one of them in South Africa. 
So that was our first tour we done uh, Durban, etc. Then I became uh, Imam in one of the little villages near Durban for one year. So yeah. I was Imam there. And then uh, I got buckled, you know, uh, someone here in UK managed to buckle me up. <laughs> and, uh, Picked you so, up? So, yeah. So Alhamdulillah, they came down, we got married, and then uh, my parents decided that I moved to, to the UK. When I moved to the UK, I, I was with my brother in Preston, up north, yeah. and at that time, it was November and it rained for two weeks, I didn't see the sun. Wow. So I was a bit depressed. Oh, it could you know, be That for two weeks, no sun, I'm going back to South Africa. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, that weekend I drove down to Leicester and it was beautiful, some sunshine and, you know, bright clouds and, uh, you know, I was thinking, okay, this is nice. The skies are, are blue here, the sun is out, you know, lots, lots of masjids in Leicester. So That's it so resembled to the area that I came uh, from, Lanesia. Yeah. So in Lanesia we have about 30, 35, 40 odd masjids. Yeah. Back, Back yeah. So Leicester, at that time, I think it was about 60 masjids. Uh, so I decided to then settle here in Leicester. Obviously, my in-laws are in Nuneaton, 45 minutes away, so that was also convenient. Yeah. Thereafter, uh, for one year, I had nothing to do. Uh, I was just like, you know, someone who's been uh, thrown around here and there. Uh, I went to a lot of places to look for a job, but everyone, you now it is saturated yeah, yeah. everywhere, no, especially in the field that we are in. Uh, then, alhamdulillah, I started uh, my first uh, uh, imamate at uh, Welford Road. The Welford Road Mosque, I used to do Juma Bayans Day. Yeah. And after that, uh, I was doing like part time, just commuting, coming back. And then I started teaching English there as well. Not oh, that wow. I know English. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So the English journey was uh, quite funny because I used to learn it in the evening and in the morning I used to teach it. Okay. So I'd done that for about three, four months and I said, no, this is not for me. Then the second was uh, 2013. I actually started at the Peace Center, Tanbilodge, okay, 2000, yeah, 2013 yeah. 14. So, at uh, Peace Center, that's where I actually started my imamat. You know, I started doing Fajr Salah, Dhuhr Salah, and then I was working for HMC. So, for HMC, I worked, you know, the Halal Monitoring yeah. Committee for one and a half years. In the same time, uh, we used to come to Thurmaston, you know, to meet all the Muslim brothers in, in the area. So we kept coming from uh, the brothers from Masjid Uthman, Marcus, they used to come, brothers from Jamia Masjid used to come, and from Masjid Omar. So we kept that activity moving. I liked this area of Thurmiston, you know, spacious roads, you have your own uh, driveways, etc. So when my contract ended in Highfields, I moved here in, in Thurmiston. And then since then, Alhamdulillah, we started in a garage. You know, so I had a flat, under the flat was a car, uh, garage, uh, the, we put a carpet there and we used to meet once a week for Maghrib Salah. Yeah. And after Maghrib, you know, we used to just have like short talim, bayan, etc. Uh, it so happened because I moved in the garage, the n neighbors found out, so they would send the children yeah. for me to teach. So I was teaching them Quran, etc. So I used to teach the boys downstairs and my wife used to teach the girls upstairs. So this was an Onyx Crescent, just Onyx, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. up the road from here. So that activity carried on for about a year, yeah. you know. Uh, we went through winter, summer, you know, the cold weather, etc. So the boys used to open the garage door and, you know, the cold used to hit us. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, all that was there. That's uh, we, ca we didn't give up, we said, we will carry on. Yeah. Then one of the uh, uncles came, Uncle Ismail uh, Dakri, he came to me and he said, why don't you move to my warehouse? which is, you know, more better. But the warehouse was near Azda. So it's a far long, out. far out, long yeah. walk. So, um, Alhamdulillah, we made Mashwira, we got the warehouse ready, put uh, carpets, you know, put heaters, made everything nice. And then uh, we got a van. So we brought the van specifically to pick up the children from their homes and take them to the warehouse, just for Madrasa, yeah. nothing else. So that activity carried on, and then every Sundays, these brothers used to come again for, we called it Kush, meaning meeting all the Muslim brothers, you know, Jawla. Yeah. So they used to come from uh, Masjid-e-Othman, Highfields, uh, Masjid-e-Omar, and also uh, Jamia Masjid. 
So Alhamdulillah, that activity carried on. That Sunday afternoon, Dhuhr, everyone used to look forward to it because all the youngsters would sit, we used to have some tea, you know, snacks, you know, a little bit of bayan. Being good, lads. Being yeah. good. So, and then we had this, uh, you know, they had this fat van that it looked like, you know, one of those mafia type things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so it was big, fat thing, and then we used to drive it around on a Sunday. So it was, you know, well, that, that out, yeah. tinted. So it was tinted. It was full white van, but it was tinted. So, Don't yeah. want Molana pulling up to you, so, lads. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, uh, those so the youngsters they loved all that, you know. They yeah. loved the, the 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 vibe of it. Slowly, slowly, we we kept looking for a property. Then this was actually a car garage. Oh, was so, it? Yes. Yeah. So uh, brother Graham, he still stays up the road. Yeah. He was uh, running this for many years. He was fixing cars and you know uh, selling parts and things like that. So we found out he wants to sell this property so we went we spoke to him and then alhamdulillah the community you know got together wow. and uh, you know a few other families in the area got together and then we managed to purchase this so place. Like, what would have been the steps of you so this was in 2016 so in 2016 we identified this place yeah um every time we used to walk past you know i used to read durud and salawat Allahumma salli ala nabi and I used to blow on this place thinking, inshallah, one day it will become a masjid. Inshallah. This was even before we got the con uh, conversation of buying the place. Yeah. Um, then what happened in 2016, uh, Hafiz Patel sub came oh. from uh, uh, Dewsbury. Hafiz Patel was one of the Amir or you could say the leaders of Dawah and Tabligh in UK, you know. All what you see, the Masajid and Madrasas in the UK, yeah. uh, is actually primarily, you know, his efforts. He was one of the first person to actually even start Taraweeh Salah in the whole of UK. That's it, 20 rakats, 20 rakats <laughs> Taraweeh Salah. Because before that there wasn't the concept of that. Okay. Um, everyone was busy and people were still getting on their feet. So when 2016 he passed away, just four months before that, he was here in Leicester and I requested him then, you know, if he can come uh, to my mosque and to, to Dua. So people are like, you don't have a mosque. I'm like, yes, I don't have a mosque, but inshallah, one day it will become a mosque. One day. So that time we stood outside. Yeah. We didn't have the keys to the building because we haven't yet purchased it. So we stood outside and then he made the dua, alhamdulillah. And I think after that dua, you know, thing just started, you know, make... Going crazy. Yeah, things started uh, rapidly moving forward. So yeah. we purchased the building within the same year. Uh, we got planning permission. Yeah. You know, about 18 months later, we got planning permission and then... The renovation started 2018 we were in so alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. so it was a journey yeah. but uh, the the lessons we learned from here is that perseverance is the main thing be steadfast persevere move forward even these uh, the newly graduated youngsters i tell them those that have just become a molana or an alim and they don't know what to do they don't know you know what steps to take i would say just choose one one aspect or one area where there's no masjids. Yeah. There's no point building a mosque next to a mosque. Or I, this is this is a message that I would get out there to everyone. If you know there's a masjid right next to you, why would you want to build another masjid right next to that masjid? Come on, it's competition have, in a way. Have some sense. <laughs> have some unity. Bring the Muslim unity together. You know, it's, don't make it out to be this is my masjid and this is your masjid. We look for an area where there's a need, identify the area where there's a need, there's Muslims, they're struggling to get to masjids, you know, yeah. there's a walk, uh, it's a long walk for them or a long uh, drive for them. Find that place and then, you know, make a mosque. So, so Alhamdulillah, Thermiston didn't have a masjid, so we got it have. established. No, they have. Look, you can see the work that... Allah and end doing. of the day, it's praises all to Allah SWT. There's nothing from all our own side, Allah's you know, work. it's all... Uh, this is all uh, Allah Ta'ala has opened the doors from us. Yeah. We just the mere tools and means, you know, utilized in this 